Hallelujah. Let's turn our Bibles to Psalm 127, verse 1. It says, Unless the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain who built it. Unless the Lord guards a city, the watchman stays awake in vain. Does it say that in your Bible? Yes. I want to talk to you about Solomon today. And I don't have much time. But I want you to be aware of who he is and what he has done. Let's go to 1 Chronicles 28. 1 Chronicles 28. Now we just read that unless the Lord builds a house, whatever you do is in vain, yes? So, so who has to build the house? The Lord has to build the house, yes? And who has to guard the city? The Lord has to guard the city, yes? Now, if we go to 1 Chronicles 28, verse 8, it says, Now therefore, in the sight of all Israel, and the assembly of the Lord, and the hearing of our God, be careful to seek out all the commandments of the Lord your God. Does it say that? Yes? This is David's instruction, yes? What does it say? To seek out all the commandments of the Lord, yes? Does it say that? Yes? If you read that, I'm not reading the whole thing. <clears throat> if you read that, when the temple was going to be built, who gave all the money? King David did. Yes? See, unless the Lord builds, but he uses a man, yes? So who gave the money for that, yes? You, you go to verse 19, it says, All this said, David, the Lord made me understand in writing by his hand upon me all the works of these plans. So David said to his son, Solomon, be strong and of good courage, yes? So, King David got the money, King David got the material, and most of all, he, King David got the plans from whom? From God. And he gave it to his son. All his son had to do was be a contractor, for lack of a better word, yes? All his son had to do, Solomon had to do, was built. Yes? Now, if you go to one Chronicles 29, yes? Uh, that's the next chapter, verse 1 and 2. It says, Furthermore, King David said to the assembly, My son Solomon, whom alone God has chosen, is young and inexperienced in the work of gate, because the temple is not for man, but for the Lord God. Yes? And verse 2. And now, for the house I have prepared with all my might. Who's saying this? David, yes? God, a gold for all things to be made of gold, silver for all things made of silver, bronze for all things made of bronze, iron for the things of iron, wood for things of wood, onyx stones, and <clears throat> stones to be set, glistening stones of various colors, all kinds of precious stones, marble slabs in abundance. Who prepared all this? Who gave all this? King David, yes? Not only that, in verse 9 it says what? Then the people rejoiced, for they had offered willingly, because with a loyal heart they offered willingly to the Lord, and King David also rejoiced greatly. So the people and the king gave to what? The temple, yes? Am I right? Yes? Yeah. So, let's go to verse 16. Um, on 1 Chronicles 29, it says, O oh Lord our God, all the abundance that we have prepared to build your house, for your name is holy, yes? For your holy name is from your hand and is all your own. In other words, without God giving you the ability to make that wealth, how can you give to the back? the Lord or to man or to even eat. Do you understand? So verse 29 now verse 16 says, O Lord our God all the abundance that we have prepared to build your house for your holy name is from your hand 
and is all you own. So, King David and the people acknowledge, unless the Lord has given them, they cannot give. If the Lord had not made you good looking or pretty, or good looking especially like me, yeah? if, if, what do you have to offer? as far as looks are concerned. Do you understand? If, if you are born ugly, and now the Lord does not make you ugly, yes, but, and you use what is, of, what is given to you by God for the devil, this is what King Solomon did. Do you understand? We are studying about the end times and the end of Christ. We must understand this carefully, yes? See, Deuteronomy 8, 18 says, And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth, that he may establish which he swore to your parents as it is this day. Yes? Do you understand? Uh, the reason I'm saying this, all of this, is in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. What does it say? Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. Let's go there. Please go there and understand that from your Bible. What does it say? Matthew chapter 16, verse 18. And I say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. So whose church is the Lord building? Your church or his church? His church. Understand that he will call those who are his. When Jesus was on earth, what did he speak of most? The kingdom of what? God. And he said, what? Repent. We may be going 180 degrees or 90 degrees or whatever from him, but God has told us to make a U-turn towards him. And he said, follow me, yes? So, in so King David gave Solomon all of his plans. Yes? And what did Solomon do? In 2 Chronicles 6.18. Just go to 2 Chronicles 6.18. But will God indeed dwell with men and on on with men on the earth? Behold, heaven and the heaven of heavens cannot contain you. How much less this temple which I have built, says Solomon. Solomon did not build the temple. God gave him the plan through his father David. He was just a contractor. You could say in the natural, the temple was built by Solomon, yes? But what can Solomon do without having a blueprints from God? Nothing. Do you understand? More than that, when David gave the plans, if he got it from God, David himself said, King's work requires what? Haste or waste? Eh? Haste. It took Solomon for almost four years to begin that work. He had everything. He had the mise plus ready to build that temple. If you read that on uh, in 1 Kings 6 verse 1. It says, It came to pass in the 480th year after the children of Israel had come to the land of Egypt. In the fourth year of Solomon's reign over Israel, in the month of Ziv, which is the second month that he began to build the house of the Lord. So it took Solomon four years and he took all the credit. Hallelujah. 
You understand? Yes? So, uh, since I don't have much time, I'll summarize what Solomon did and why you have to read more into the scriptures, not apart from scriptures. Who he is and see, no one can be saved because one person told me Solomon in the old covenant was not saved. How can anyone be saved without Christ? Do you understand? Yes? So, King David got the plans and everything ready with his people, but Solomon took the credit. Yes? Do you understand? Yes? Now, Solomon made a covenant with those God didn't want him to. In the New Testament, it speaks about, I think I've marked it down, yes? In, in the New Covenant, it says what? 2 Corinthians 6.14, what does it say? Two Corinthians six fourteen says, "Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? What communion with the darkness?" Does it say that in your Bible? Yes, yes. So, if they don't have faith, and they don't believe. They are unbelievers. Yes. Go to Deuteronomy chapter seven. Deuteronomy chapter 7, you can read 1 and 2 later, but in verse 2 it says, when the, Lord, you, when the Lord your God delivers them over to you and, you, and you shall conquer them and utterly destroy them, you shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy to them. Does it say that in your Bible? Does it say no covenant? Yes. But you, we find that Solomon made Lots of covenants, yes. He had 900 wives, yeah. I struggled with one mother-in-law. He had how many? Yeah. This man struggled, yes. Hallelujah, but... Do you understand? So, if you read the Bible, it says his wives worshipped Molech. We now have Anglis as a name to Malcolm, yes? But Molek required sacrifices of the firstborn. That means his wives sacrificed their firstborn. That means Solomon sacrificed his children. Understand, he built the Lord's temple, but he also catered and succumbed to his wives. You understand? Read that. Yeah. Because if the wife sacrificed to Molech, and this is an abomination to God, and it says in Scripture, and we're going through it narrow. You understand, this has more like has different names, yes? And Solomon built the altars which stood after him. Guess what? He sacrifices firstborn. Do you understand? From, the, from those wives. This is King Solomon, yes? Hallelujah. When Jesus said in Matthew 5.17, I believe, he says, not a jot and a tittle will pass away from the law, yes? Jesus says that in Matthew 5.17, yes? People whom Jesus was talking to understood what Jesus was meaning by that. See, according to Jewish traditions, Solomon changed the law. See, he had how many wives? Over 900, yeah? Why do you not want to have those wives? Because they will influence you, yes? 
So he changed a dot or a tittle or whatever from the yod or whatever, from the law to make it look like they didn't influence him at all. You understand? According, this is according to Hebrew tradition. What I'm trying to say is that they understood what Jesus meant. You understand? We don't understand because we, we are not Jewish by nature. We have to study all this. Do you understand? Yeah? So, in, when, when people approach Samuel saying, we want a king like the other people, God gave a lot of things against them having a king. But they said, no, we want a king. And he said what? God said what? The king must write the law of Moses by his hand during his reign. You understand? Why? So he's not above the law. You understand? Yes? So he understands the law. Nowhere in the Bible do you find Solomon doing that. Guess what? He became about the law. Which is what I was going to teach you in Ecclesiastics, but you, you were not ready for that. Do you understand? Do you remember? I started Ecclesiastics chapter 1 on March 11th of last year. Do you understand? So, Solomon, when God appeared to him, asked for wisdom. Does wisdom keep you from going wrong? No. Wisdom just tells you what is right from wrong. What do you need? Obedience. To do what is right. That makes all the difference. Because last week I told you that the scripture says obedience is better than what? Sacrifice. Obedience. You might have all the wisdom in the world. You might know even the heart of God. But are you willing to follow Christ? Are you willing to put away the things of the world and follow Jesus? When Jesus was being tempted by the devil, people say that they, 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 they're fond of saying that the devil used scriptures. Yes. And that Jesus knew the heart of God. Even the devil knows the heart of God, yes. But there was a willingness and obedience to Jesus that the devil didn't have. Though he knew the heart of God. Let me put it this way, bluntly. The devil knows more scripture than you. He knows the heart of God better than you. He knows the spiritual things better than you and me, put together maybe. But he's not willing to follow that. And as long as you're not willing to follow what God has ordained for you, you're following the devil, not Jesus. The Bible says, if you follow Jesus, you might fall. But Romans 8, 1 says what? There's no condemnation. For those who walk according to the Spirit, yes? Do you understand? So turn around. Follow Jesus. You might have failed all these years, but Jesus does not want you to fail in following Him. Do you understand? You might enjoy the world thoroughly,
But remember, it is appointed for you to die. And on judgments, judgment day, what answer will you give him? From whom you cannot hide anything. Oh, you know how much you suffered? No, you haven't suffered anything. You understand? And why do you have to suffer when he suffered for you? I could go on and on, and on, yes? If you have the power from above and the wisdom to, from above and the willingness to be obedient to that, you don't need to suffer. Jesus went to the cross willingly. And that gets me every time. If I want, if I see the cross, I mean that way is the cross, and I have to be on the cross, I would take the other way. Every time. Because the cross is not pleasant. But Jesus did that for you and me. Hallelujah. Are you willing to follow him? It doesn't matter how much wisdom you have, how wise you think you are, are you willing and obedient to follow him? This is where the fools of this world surpass the wise of the world. Do you understand now? Yes, the last become the first. This is what matters. Are you willing and obedient to him? Because Jesus said, follow me. Hallelujah. Let's stand up. Begotten One, Jesus Christ, the Lord.